Good afternoon and welcome to All About Animals. I am Sherry Gratitor and this afternoon we are in Greendale, Wisconsin at the Timberwolf Preservation Society. And our guest and our host today is Nancy Dowler, who is the president of the society. Uh, Nancy, you said that the main purpose of this society today is education. Yes, it's always been education. Education why and how? Well, basically a lot of the myth about the wolf came over from Europe uh, when the Europeans came over here. They used to use the wolf as a mechanism to discipline their children. If you don't behave yourself, the big bad wolf is going to get you. So they brought all those beliefs over to America. Um, we're trying to dispel those myths, let people know what the wolf is really about. Uh, obviously, they killed off all the wolves across the United States. Uh, by the 1950s, they all had been killed except for northern Minnesota. They thought it was an evil creature, it had to be destroyed. So that's our purpose, is dispel those myths, tell the facts about the wolves. Now, um, we've discussed the fact that these timber these are genetically pure eastern timber wolves. Yes. Now, what does that mean when you talk about a genetically pure animal and what's happened to that genetic base? Well, basically, it's, uh, it's not mixed with anything else. It's uh, actually the eastern timber wolf is... Uh, uh, subspecies of gray wolf. They are the wolves found in the eastern states. They are the wolves found here in Wisconsin. It has not been tainted by any other um, no canine genes in the pool, in the gene pool. Hi, honey. Now, this Hello. is Mona, and Mona is being very affectionate. It's okay, honey. It's okay. She wasn't quite sure that time. <laughs> I mean, she was fine before, and she wasn't quite sure that time. Uh, she's being very affectionate right now, and she's exhibiting a couple of behaviors we were talking about. Yeah. And we were talking about the fact that she's acting submissive, and at the same time, that submission can change into a defensive behavior. Yes. When they, when they lower their body, and they can very easily move in any position, to either side, front or back. Uh, so she's also, that's the defensive part. If her back raised one inch and that head would lower, teeth would show she'd be completely defensive. In this posture, she could very easily get that butt lower and be completely submissive. Because right now she's sniffing on my hand, but she's not sure. Yeah. She's being a little bit nervous about it. It's okay, honey. I won't hurt you, baby. Strangers always have that effect on them. Okay. Um, there are what? There are seven or eight wolves that are here. Seven. At, seven wolves mm -hmm. right now at the at the society. And it is open to the public, and you do run education. Um, and I've read that wolves are coming back. Yes. And that they, are, they used to be endangered. They are no longer right. considered endangered. And the population is growing, even in northern Wisconsin, I'm hearing. And yes. Occasionally being seen in southern Wisconsin. Yes. Uh, what does that mean for education? Well, they suspect there's over a little over 500 of them now in Wisconsin. Remembering that in the 50s there were none. 73, when they enacted endangered species, they started coming into Wisconsin on their own. Um, for our education, we start talking more about how you live with wild animals. You don't leave your little cat, your little dog out, um, even when there's coyotes in the area. They'll coyotes come in. Sure. Um, we have a brochure we hand out that talks about, well, don't feed what the wolf preys on because that's going to draw attention if they're really hungry. Although we find that fear of man is quite powerful, and we try to stress that. Even here with these that have been human imprinted, they've been bottle fed, they've been seeing humans every day of their life, I still have to be careful how I move, how I carry tools that doesn't look threatening or doesn't look like a weapon. I, I was telling someone that, personality-wise, the difference between a wolf and a dog, and I told you this inside, is you say to a dog, do something, and the dog does it. Yes. And if you say to a wolf, do something, when you don't say it, you ask it. Always ask. And then the second thing, it's the wolf's decision whether or not That's it's right. going to get done. Yes. So yeah. wolves partner with you. Yes. If they choose to. If they, it's always up to them. They are always in control. When you step into their territory, at that point you relinquish control over, and they know whether you've relinquished control. 
Um, at that point, they will tell you and give you signals as to what you can do and what you can't, what spooks them, what they don't like. Um, I, Mona's been my best teacher. Yeah. She's right up front there, and she's relentless, and she will always let me know if there's something she doesn't like. And how she lets me know is she'll stop dead in her tracks and glare in my eyes. Then I know I did something she didn't you like. stepped over the line. And I always apologize, just like you would to your friend. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry I did that. She'll come whining and lick my mouth like, it's okay, Nancy. But she always gives me that side look. Don't do it again. We're going to walk over this way and look at a couple of the other wolves while we talk. Uh, yeah, that's my little baby boy. Oh, I love that little boy. When you're with the wolves in your private, it's different. When we're here, we're just yeah. the whole dynamic. And they are. They're totally different animals when I'm out here alone. And I prefer to go in there and clean when I'm here alone. Mm -hmm. There's nothing distracting them. There's nothing unusual going on. And I feel a whole lot more comfortable, and so do they. 